Hi, I'm going to go over new construction with you. This could be an absolutely great process that you're going to love from beginning to end when buying a new home. Or, of course, it could be the worst experience you've ever dealt with, um, depending on what you know and how you really go about looking. And I want to really address this and break this down into three areas. Number one is what I call quality over quantity, really what you're looking at. So you could get an idea when you're looking at new construction, especially if you're a first time home buyer, so you have a good idea um, and know what's out there. The second is land. How does the land play an important role? And the difference in maybe what I call buying an apple and an orange in comparing the two. You don't want to do that. You want to know where you need to buy and the difference in land cost because that will have a direct effect on the homes that you buy. And then the third is really questions to ask. What you need to know. There's a lot of things when you're buying a new home you need to know. Because buying a new home is not like buying a pre-owned home. Pre-owned homes are easy. There's not much to it. You go out in a subdivision, you look around, pretty much the home is what it is. The neighborhood is what the neighborhood is. You probably should go on a pre-owned home out in the afternoon and in the evening to see the differences and you're pretty much getting what you're paying for. You get an inspector in there to look at. New construction is completely different depending on what stage you're getting. You could be buying a home where there's just dirt, there's very little around, or maybe you're buying a home and it's almost complete or maybe the subdivision's half complete and you're taking a lot of liability when you're doing that. What is the subdivision going to look like when it's complete? Is it going to look like the builder says it's going to look like? Or is it sort of going to be trashy? Um, that's going to have a big effect on you know, what your home's worth and can you resell it? What about, what about the reputation of the builder? What about the area? There's just a lot of different things you need to know. Example, say you're buying a home and all, the subdivision, all of a sudden the subdivision's halfway complete and the builder files bankruptcy. They go out of business. What do you do then? Um, what happens to all your earnest money when that happens? You $10,000, $20,000. Some people could be over 100000 just depending on what price range you're in. So there's a, there's a lot of different questions you need to ask and a lot of things you need to know about. But first, let's go over what I call quantity versus quality. Now when I say this, I don't mean a quality builder cannot build a piece of junk. Nor do I mean a quantity builder can't build a great home. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I mean when you walk into a home and the home is complete, whether it's a pre-owned or new home, do you want to walk in and say, ooh, this is a nice home? Or do you want to walk in and say, wow, this is a great home, look at this? And that's the difference. Example, one builder might have a home in the, in the subdivision and it's 3,000 square feet and it's $250,000 in another home for $250,000, it's only going to buy you 2,200 square feet. So let me use a real example of a subdivision in Tampa and give you an idea from three builders. First thing you know, you need to know when you're looking is builders rarely, and I don't like to use the word never, so I'll use the word rarely. Um, they rarely ever want to go into a subdivision and have a like kind of builder. See, builders target different types of people. You don't want two different builders trying to sell the same different type of the same person. They're really competing against each other. And a lot of subdivisions you'll usually see if there's two builders, you're usually going to see a, you know maybe a lower end builder and then a little bit higher end builder, etc. So if, if it's one if it's one um, builder in the subdivision, a lot of times you'll see more your smaller homes and then your much bigger homes. So you'll need to keep that in mind. So. First, let's go over this. We'll use a subdivision. Here's a subdivision. It has Syntex, it has Morrison, and it has Cardell. So with the Syntex, you're going to walk out there and you're going to be going up to the home. And in the outside of the home, you're going to notice right off the roof pitch isn't very high. It's a very low roof pitch. It might be something like this right here. Now, the architectural detail isn't going to be real great. The landscape package, pack, the landscape package will be very minor. When you walk inside the home, everything's going to probably be a little bit more sparse. It's going to have your 10-foot ceilings, the wet area in the kitchen, so the bedrooms, the bathrooms, the laundry room, the kitchen is all going to be vinyl. The countertops are just going to be your regular laminate countertops. Um, and it, you know, it's just going to be sort of the regular type of countertops, wood countertops. Now, when it comes to... Um, 
your lighting in the home. In the kitchen example, you're going to have fluorescent lights. You're, it's just, it's going to be very basic. No, you, you go into a Morrison home, it's going to be, in the lots on the Syntax, they're going to be 50 foot lots. So the lots are going to usually to be about 50 feet wide by 110 feet deep. When you go on, when you go to the Morrison, you're going to start noticing a difference. The lots are going to be 60 feet wide, about 115 feet deep, but you're going to see the elevation is going to have a lot more detail to it. The landscape package is going to be much better. The roof pitch, instead of being like this, is going to probably be a little bit steeper, a little bit better. It's going to be like that. When you walk inside the home, you're going to notice tile in the kitchen, the laundry room, the bathrooms. You're going to notice plant ledges, art niches. Um, the countertops are going to be up, are going to be slightly upgraded. They'll probably be your standard countertop, but a bullnose edge, um, which will look a lot better, make them certainly look more upgraded. Your cabinets will go from 30 inch cabinets to 36, in some cases, 42 inch cabinets. And you'll, you'll just notice a difference. Now, when you go to Cardell, you're going to notice even more of a difference. The lots are going to go from 60 feet wide to 65. They're going to, they're going to be um, range, usually on average, about 120 feet deep. Now, the outside, the roof pitch, isn't going to be like this, like the Syntex. It's not going to be like the Morrison. It's going to be a higher roof pitch. And that's very important because when it comes to roof pitch, the higher the roof pitch, the more money it costs. The higher the ceilings inside, the more money it costs. The more detail, the more money it costs. The better appliance packages, fixtures, etc., everything in the home, the more money it's going to cost. So you're going to have the, the roof pitch will be higher, the elevation will be better, the landscape package will be similar to a Morrison, but when you walk inside, you're not going to see, like in a lot of the Morrison, the 14-inch tile, the 16-inch tile. You're going to see more the 18 or the 20-inch tile. The lightings are going to be recessed in the kitchen. The ceilings are going to go from, unlike a, um, a Syntex, which will have 10-foot ceilings, the Morrison will probably have 11-foot ceilings. In some areas, 12, the Cardells will go up to 14 feet. So the ceilings are going to be a lot more dramatic. The corners aren't going to be straight. They're going to be rounded. There's just going to be a lot more detail in the home. Plant wedges, art in niches, the fixtures are going to be upgraded. Uh, there's this it's the countertops are going to go from your standard countertop and most of them are going to be either Corian or Zodiac countertops so you're going to see you're going to see quite a bit of difference and you need to pay attention to this because this has a lot to do with the home like I said quality over quantity there's some builders out there that build very you know they just build a box but they build a very good box and then there's other builders out there that are building I've seen $3 million homes that were an absolute piece of junk before. They were just 7,000 square feet and people actually just thought they should have been built good and they were actually junk. So there's certainly um, things you need to look at. Second, let's go over land because I think that's real important. When a lot of people are buying a home, you can't compare apples and oranges. In other words, you can't take a home being built in Wesley Chapel and compare it with a new home beat built in, in, um, in, say, Riverview. They're just completely different. One's in Pasco County, one's in Hillsborough County, and the land prices are different. So, or sometimes even right next to each other, different communities. There's a difference in communities, say in New Tampa, there's a difference between what homes sell for in Tampa Palms compared to what they might sell for over in Heritage Isle for really the same home, maybe even with the same builder. Not that they're building the same homes in the same builder, but you get the point. So you really have to pay attention to that. So let's look at how land really matters. Let's say we use a subdivision, we'll say Lenar is the builder, and we'll say they're building in, let's say, Lando Lakes. Okay, Lenar's building in Lando Lakes and they have a 50 foot wide lot. In this 50 foot lot, is worth $50,000, just the dirt's worth $50,000. And then they have maybe a couple a couple miles or maybe even, it could be even, even in the same subdivision, maybe they have a 60 foot section and, and the Lenar's built in the 60 foot section. Now, the difference is in this is a lot of people think, oh, well that's only, you know, 
six fifty foot fifty thousand sixty foot sixty thousand that's only ten thousand dollars that isn't how it works because the land is usually figured at twenty five percent of the value of the whole home that's a very good general rule of thumb so if you take say a two thousand square foot home and the lot's worth fifty thousand dollars they're going to want to build a two hundred thousand dollar home there but on the sixty foot lot it's going to be 60 times 4, $240,000. So you could see the homes are going to have a lot different finish out usually, and they're going to be worth more money. So even though it's in the same builder in the same community, it could be a big difference in price. Now, now take it if you're going with the different in a different community. You're going from maybe somewhere in Lando Lakes to maybe somewhere in Apollo Beach or somewhere in Riverview or West Chase, etc. So you really have to pay it, pay um, close attention to that because the house is what the house is, but the land is what's driving all the cost up. The more the more um, the land gets worth, the higher the value of the home goes, and when things start to become landlocked, they start to build out. In this case, in Tampa's case, a lot of the building is going north. A lot of the building is going up in, in West Wesley Chapel, Lando Lakes area, areas like that. It's moving north. So just pay particular attention to that when you're looking at homes. Let's see, the, the last thing I want to go over, there's a lot of things you need to look at when you're looking at a home. Um, let's take builders, for example. And we'll start off, and what I like to do is I like to really go out and I like to look at homes that are currently being built, homes that haven't had their drywall up yet. And the reason why I want to do this is I want to look at the wood they're using. Are they using a grade one, a grade two, a grade three wood? Most builders are using a grade two. If they're using a grade three, there's going to be a lot of knots, a lot of bows. It's, it's, they shouldn't even be using it. They'd have a real, even, a real hard time even passing inspections, but a lot of builders use grade three wood in their construction. And people say, well, what, what's the big deal? Well, the deal is if you're going out, let's say you buy the home, you're closing the home, all of a sudden, um, three years later or two years later, you're looking at your wall and your wall looks like it's starting to bow out. Keep in mind, when, when, a, piece of, when a tree is cut down, the wood actually takes seven years from that point to completely die. So it, it is important because if you're seeing a big bow, it didn't look very obvious when you moved in, but all of a sudden two years later, it starts to become more, um, certainly more obvious how you're gonna get rid of that is you're gonna have to rip the wall apart and it, it's gonna be a big deal. You're gonna wanna look, example, I like looking at two-story homes. I always look at two-story homes because I wanna see what kind of flooring system they're putting in the home. They don't put the flooring systems on the one-story homes. I'm not talking the slab, I'm talking up above. And that's gonna tell a lot about a builder. If a builder's putting a two-story home up and they're not putting a flooring system in, they're cutting major, major corners and they're building a junk home. I'd stay away, matter of fact, I'd run from them. Um, how they're how are they sealing the home? What are they using? Some foam type of seal? What type of what type of insulation are they using? I would look at um, I would look up above when they get when when they start going out and looking at homes and seeing what the ductwork is like in the attic. If you have one kink in a ductwork, that may cost you ten dollars a month, month after month after month. And the builders, the better companies higher, better, and more experienced builders. The better builder they are, the more they monitor over the people who are putting up the home. I mean, sometimes that's why these homes a lot years ago were just slapped together. The, you know, the city um, inspectors were missing a lot of things. I've, I've actually seen homes out there that were built and they forgot to put any ven ventilation in the home. There's no way for the heat. It was getting up to 200 and 10 degrees in the attic in the middle of the summer. It's it, that'll just destroy a roof and warp wood like you wouldn't believe. So there's a lot of things you need to look at. Um, other things that I might want to look at if I'm building a new home. Where's your lot situated? What are some good elevations? What are some good floor plans? You might love the floor plan and that's great. You have to live there, but keep in mind, if it's not a good floor plan, you could have a really hard time reselling it. Some builders build in the past 
some build in the present, and some build in the future. Example, go look at a home built in 1987. Now look at a home built in 1991. There's differences between homes built in the 80s and homes built in the 90s. And builders build different ways. You definitely want to keep that in mind. If you're buying a home and it's backing up to a vacant land, don't just trust what the sales rep says. That sales rep is there to represent the builder. And the company might have told them that single family are going back there, but then they could be half right. But the other half it might be zoned multifamily. And there's a difference. If you want to see a price of a home sink quicker than the Titanic, buy something that's zoned multifamily or commercial behind. Um, you're, you're going to see it sink pretty quick because people just don't want to get up and look out their backyard and see a bunch of people in an apartment complex staring at them or a bunch of, or look down below in a two-story homes at five o'clock in the morning and see these trucks backing up and hearing the beep, beep, beep sound. So you really need to look at this and though you might not mind, you have to figure the other 98% of the people buying homes will mind and that's going to have a direct effect on what you're, you know, what you're going to get for the home. There's a lot of different things you need to look at. The other thing I would strongly recommend you do is you should strongly go, I strongly recommend you go out and you do your research on not only the company who's building the home, but the builder who's building the home. Find out where they've built in the past that particular builder, the individual. Find out where they built in the past. Go knock on some doors. Ask the people how their experience was. If they've been building in that community for a while and that particular person, the individual has been building in there, knock on a couple doors. Talk to the homeowners. See if they were happy. It's not if a builder has a problem. It's how they resolve that problem. Some builders, they resolve the problem by not doing anything or just rigging it, doing as little as possible. That isn't what you want. So knock on the doors. You might have questions about school systems. Knock on the doors. Um, reputation. There's some builders in this area in Tampa Bay that have horrible reputations and people stay away from them like the plague. And there's communities that have horrible reputations. And there's people that just can't sell their home in those communities to save their life. So you're really going to have to know a lot, of, a lot about this. What's um, especially on if, if you're buy, buying or building a custom home, you have every right in the world to know what that builder's financial setting is. Like I said earlier, you don't want to buy a home and all of a sudden find out that builder went bankrupt um, halfway into the project and there goes your $20,000 in earnest money and everything else. So there's a lot of things you need to check out. Now, I would strongly recommend getting a real estate agent to work with, but an agent who understands new construction, not just anybody, because new construction could really make or break you. Um, you're, you're certainly, if you buy early in the process, you're going to stand to make a lot more money because this is a subdivision continues to go. Generally speaking, builders are going to raise prices. Um, could be a lot of different reasons why they'll do that. But anyhow, I would strongly suggest working with a realtor that knows about new construction. It's not going to cost you anything. Builders, 70% of their business come from real estate agents. They're not going to, they, when, when, first off, and you need to understand this, when a builder builds, and let's use Lennar as an example, doesn't make any difference. Lennar, Syntex, Morrison, Pulsey, doesn't make any difference. They don't go through each individual home and say, well, this one's with a realtor, this one isn't, this one's with a realtor, so is this one and this one. They don't do that. Their budgets and their projections are set usually in October or November, depending on when their fiscal year end is, and it's set, and it's going to go over stuff like sales reps commission, realtor commission, marketing, advertising, special promotions. It's going to go over all that stuff. So whether you use a real estate agent or whether you don't use a real estate agent, it's pretty much costing the same price. The advantage of having a real estate agent is they could really direct you and guide you. Plus, if you have any problems, you're not only going to have the representation of the real estate agent, but the broker and in a good portion, the whole real estate community back behind you. I've seen that happen before. I actually, um, I, I actually, one of the first um, people I've ever sold a home to, he called me up and he, I never forget, his name was Dave, called up and he said, well, I'm going to do this myself. I think I could save money. And I told him what I told you. He went around, he called builders, 
and they all said no you know look it doesn't make any difference if you use a realtor or not he ended up um, calling me back up I met him over at the home and I told him I said Dave take what I say with a grain of salt you have five people they all have problems on the home four of them have agents one of them does not you who's the last person on the totem pole I said you are I said so so two of those problems get resolved two more people come on board they have real estate agents who's the last person on the totem pole and I said, you. I said, the reason this isn't 31 flavors, it isn't first come, first serve. It's basically who the builders know where their bread's buttered. Now, if, if, he, didn't, if he bought a home and he was unhappy, do they really think, do they really care? Because now, the sales rep might care right there, but in the long scheme of things, they don't because they know he's never going to buy a home through him again. He might go out and tell 10 or 20 of his co-workers who will probably not buy a home. Builders know this. On a real estate agent, I've had, I've had some situations where I've sold 5, 12, as many as 17 homes in one year with the builder, making that builder probably in the upwards of $300,000 for that year, if not more. Now, they understand this, and they know, especially when they get an agent that knows what they're doing. So I would strongly recommend that you use a real estate agent, interview, find out what their credentials are with new construction. And if you have any questions whatsoever, please give me a call. I apologize for this being long, but there's a lot of things you need to know. And I would make, rather make it a little longer and save you guys a lot of money than have you have a, ha um, a headache in the future. So I wish you the best of luck with your new home. Take care.